Yo, yo, what's going down, everybody? It's your boy, Onto the Boss here, and I just felt like doing a commentary today, you know? Ha, ah, psych, it's actually Unbeatable Jacob here on Onto's channel today. Got some Ricky Rubio gameplay. Let's get into it. Welcome everyone to this 2K Sports Broadcast live from Sacramento in California. It's Cousins, then there's Garcia, and it's Hickson in at the power forward position. All of that is unquestioned. We'll now go to Doris Burke who spoke with Paul Westphal. Doris? I am a YouTube comment here just like Anto and I've known Anto for a very very long time and I'll get more into our history once I get further in this video but the first thing I want to do is introduce the gameplay tell you guys what you're watching why you're watching it and pretty much what's up with me and who I am so anyways the first thing I want to say about this gameplay is this is a series that I run on my channel that's pretty decent size but uh you know I just thought I would try and get a little more exposure by posting on Anto's channel and it's a pretty good opportunity but like I said, I'll talk more about me and Anto in the in the future. But hi. Uh, anyways, what I was gonna say about this series that I have going, it's a creating a legend on NBA 2K12 with Ricky Rubio, the Spaniard, the rookie this year. And uh, you know, I just kind of decided that I'd do this rather than doing a my player for the time being on my channel. After the new roster updates and everything came out, I was pretty eager to use Ricky Rubio because he's a really good player in this game now, and he's having a standout season, so I thought it would be a really fun series to start, and it has been so far. I'd say probably only about a quarter of the way into the season, but right now we're playing the Sacramento Kings, and our record is terrible. Right now I think our record is 3-10 and 10 heading into this game, and that's really bad. Uh, I'd like to blame quite a bit on of it that the fact that we haven't had Kevin Love for the past one or two weeks, I'm pretty sure. It's been a while since I've actually had Kevin Love play with me. This is his first game back, and obviously he is a tank. Kevin Love is a beast, and you know, it's pretty big that we have him back now. Hopefully we can start winning some more games. But on a positive note, I have been warning how to kind of abuse Ricky Rubio and make him look like a champion. A lot of the things I'm doing with him lately is just perfecting his eye. Uh, his runner, her floater, whatever you want to say, his spin move. You'll see me use this spin move a lot in these two videos. Just so happened that the spin move was working to perfection in these two games that I'm going to show you guys. But I do want to talk about my history with Anto a little bit here. I want to talk about how I've gotten to know him, how well I know him, and uh, you know the longevity of our friendship over the internet. It's pretty crazy to actually think that I've known Anto since he's only had about, I'd say, I think 300 or 300 or 400 subscribers when I found out about him and he actually kind of inspired me a bit to uh, make my own videos and it really has been a long time since then actually I'm not no new youtuber I've been around for just about as long as Anto but right when he was brand new I started watching him and became pretty close friends with him because that's back in the days before he had 17,000 subscribers and uh, he actually answered messages and you know, had time to play with every one of his fans, but uh, obviously that's not the case now, so it's a little bit different to get in contact with him. But way back then when I first met him, I uh, talked to him quite often, and he gave me a lot of good ideas, and I still talk to him uh, at least weekly. Not very often do I go a whole week without talking to Anto, and it's pretty good because I've known him for a solid probably two years on the internet, and that's pretty crazy to think about it, actually. Me and him are kind of, you know, partners in crime when it comes to YouTube. I give him ideas, he gives me ideas, and, you know, pretty much just roll with that. Pretty good friends and get along pretty well, and I'd like to thank him in advance for giving me this opportunity to post on his channel. It's not the first time, but I'd say he's probably got at least 10,000 new subscribers since the last time I did anything on his channel. But, whoa, what was that right there? Looking like a glitchy Blake Griffin, the way he just, like hung in the air then threw it down except uh, that crazy dunk Blake Griffin had the other week uh, he didn't even hardly touch the rim I honestly was not too impressed with that but as you guys are watching that gameplay I didn't have a whole lot to say about it because I was explaining other things but uh, it was a close game for a good while Sacramento eventually ran away with it and we pretty much have no chance of getting back into it either way Wes Johnson does hit this deep three at the end of the game it's kind of a lost cause though because we're still down by like 12 so wasn't too much of a ball game I ended with 10 points and 9 assists, which are both below my Seaburn averages, I do believe. Not too great of a game, like I said, but 
I guess it happens. They had a pretty great roster, actually, with Joe Johnson, Tyreek Evans, you know, Jimmer, everybody. <laughs> it was pretty crazy, actually. DeMarcus Cousins. But on a more positive note, I did win the Player of the Month for the West. On the flip side, the East was held by LeBron James. So that's a pretty good start to my rookie year. I probably imagine that that's the first time ever that a rookie has won the first Player of the Month, or maybe the Player of the Month ever. I'm not sure if a rookie's ever won that. But anyways, you can go ahead and take a look at my actual stats here. I'm averaging about 15 points and 9 assists a game, somewhere close to that. I'm actually leading the league in assists and steals, so that's actually really cool too as a rookie. Once again, I'm pretty sure that may be the first time that a rookie has ever done that. But we are playing against Golden State now. Monta Ellis, Stephen Curry, what a backcourt that I'm going to have to face. Let's go. Okay, so we're here at the Oracle Center playing in Golden State. Actually, the Oracle Arena, I should say. And Golden State's actually doing pretty well this year on this game. They are 10-7, and 7, so a hell of a lot better than what we are doing. And, uh, you know, it's a game that we pretty much have to win. These are the games that we need to win. And is someone going to get in front of me? And one to start off the game. That's the way I like to see it. Go to the line, and the first one is up, and it is good. Someone needs to stop me, right? So Beasley hands it off to me in the corner. I'm going to find Derek Williams for the easy jumper, who is also a rookie. And I think Derek Williams and Ricky Rubio are both going to have a really good career, and I'm actually really scared to see how well the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to be in one to two years. And one other thing that really caught me off guard about this game was Epke Hudohu, or however you say it. I think he was like the sixth overall pick in the 2010 draft, and Beasley throwing it down. But anyways, this Udo guy, Udo, I'm not exactly sure how to say it, he was starting at small forward. Isn't he like a center? I could have swore he was like maybe a power forward at the very, very least. But I was pretty positive he was a center. And that's a really big lineup to run that they used with uh, Andre Beatrice, David Lee, and FK Udohu. And then with the backcourt being so short with Monte and Stephen Curry, I thought that was a really odd starting lineup. But I do get to the line at the end of the first quarter and I can't make my first free throw. That's really disappointing. But the second one does go in, so we tie it up at 19-19. And I sit on the bench there for a couple minutes at the beginning of the second quarter. But I'm going to head straight back into the game, definitely before halftime. And hopefully the score doesn't change too much. There's nothing worse than when you sit on the bench and your team just blows it for you. Trust me, I've had that happen quite a few times already this year. But anyways, we're running down the court. I'm going to hit him with a spin move. Go up and under. Can't find anyone, so I kick it out to Wes Johnson. And he can't hit it. Jeez. I would have had so many assists this game if all my players would have converted. I was actually thinking about putting all the failed attempts that, was, that happened in this game for assists for me. Because I swear if my teammates would have finished around the hoop and, you know, wide open shots like that that I know they could make, I would have been close to, like, 25 assists. I swear it would have been nuts. But instead, I do believe I end with, like, 11 or 12 or something like that. I don't know. You guys are going to have to wait and see. So anyways, I hit him with that spin move. We're trying to stay in the game right now because it's like 29 to 35 and it's something we really need to, you know, win. Like I was saying, it's getting pretty out of hand to our record. I may have to find somewhere else to go rather than Minnesota. I really do want to stay in Minnesota because like I was saying earlier, they could be mean in a couple of years, but <laughs> not looking too great right now. And once again, is someone going to get in front of me? That's too easy. Just run past every defender and throw it down. But right on the other end, Steph Curry answers back with a little jumper. And I just can't seem to find my way into this game. So I go to my spin move up and under. And I make it for the last second shot. You know that improves your teammate grade a lot. Like a whole bar, I believe. Maybe a whole entire grade goes up with the last second shot. So we do cut the lead down a bit before halftime. So we're going to start off the third quarter with just, I think, about a five-point disadvantage. And I get another assist to the fellow rookie, Derek Williams. And once again, I give it back to him in the paint. He goes up and under, off the glass, and one. So Derek Williams is putting in work. So right here, I do a good guy Greg move and take a charge, take one for the team, and get right back up. So right now, we're trying to find our way back into this game. We've done it pretty successfully. I'm... Um, stuck here in the paint and once again I find my boy to throw it down Wes Johnson I actually like my teammates a lot it's a wonder why we're not winning more games but the 2003 all-star gets the rebound Brad Miller and I throw it up to Michael Beasley for the alley-oop I believe to take back the lead so we're on a roll right now coming out of halftime with a punch Michael Beasley probably could have thrown that down but the lay-in will do two points is two points I will take it 
So now we're back here and it's a closer ball game. Really excited for this and Beasley does a little post move and puts it in. And somehow I get an assist for that. I don't really see how that's an assist, but once again, I will take it. I'm kind of getting lucky this quarter. So right here towards the end of the quarter, I throw it to Kevin Love in the post. He scores it with 15 seconds left. We managed to get the ball back. I'm racing up court trying to take the last shot and I find super cool Beasley for the buzzer beater. What a shot. That's pretty sweet. So right now, I already have a double-double going into the fourth quarter, and Michael Beasley is lighting it up this game. 25 points already, and I sit on the bench for the first uh, two or three minutes of the fourth quarter. I'm not too angry with that. The score did not get too much of a difference between now and then. Only three points, what we're up by. So Bray goes up, and once again, I'm telling you guys, I could have had like 20 assists, and my dudes would have finished around the basket. So I give him a little pump fake go with the spin move and put it in So for my 18th point in the game. So I'm actually kind of stacking out this stat line right now. 18 points and 10 assists so far. It's looking pretty good. So right now it's a pretty close game still. 78 to 76. I pull up for the easy jumper, get the good release, but it rims out. That's it's not good at all. So once again, the kick it out to Steph Curry. Steph Curry's trying to find something to do. Gives a no-look pass to Monte. He drives it and gives it off to his postman, David Lee, and scores it to tie it back up at 78. So Golden State really wants this game, as do we. So we're coming back down the court, and no one's going to get in front of me. That's six easy points I've had this game just by walking down the court and slamming it home. A lot of people really don't realize that boy Rubio can get off the floor. So anyways, David Lee with that little lefty jumper scores it, and they take the lead 82-80, to 80, so we're going to have to foul, send him to the line, and Monta's jumper is cold as ice, or I should say free throw, not jumper, and that's pretty much a wrap on the game. Once again, another disappointing loss. I'm really starting to think I need to get out of Minnesota. Beasley does take a little nice jump shot there and gives me another assist, but once again at the end of the game, I'm saying a lost cause because there's nothing else we can do to take this win. Uh, it's pretty disappointing. Like I said, maybe we might need to think about getting out of Minnesota. So if you enjoyed this video at all, go ahead and head over to my channel. I have quite a few episodes of this series up already, and I plan to continue to do them for quite some time. But anyways, I'm Unbeatable Jacob. Check out my channel, follow me on Twitter, do anything, and I'm out.